And I'm on a little bit of a campaign about the Live 5. Uh, Live 5 is not a bluegrass band. I don't claim it's a bluegrass band with that instrumentation, but the material we do is bluegrass, and it seems like a lot of the bluegrass people like it. And, and uh, I wouldn't want anybody to think I'm confused about what is bluegrass and what is not. I'm hoping that we can get in at some bluegrass festivals. In California, they, they can handle it all right. <laughs> and I'm hoping that I can bring it sometime to Winter Hunt. And um, anyway, this is one that, yeah, we don't have this uh, uh, recorded yet, but uh, we started doing it. And um, it's kind of named after me being Dr. Banjo. It's called The Doctor Is In. imagine a tune like that could be played by a bluegrass band, but but I could hear it played more easily by the Live Five. You start yeah. to think in different ways. Yeah, when I uh, when I started making this up, I thought, well, who's going to play this? And I thought Live Five because that's the band that I play in. And unlike with Hot Rise, I'd make up a banjo tune, and it wouldn't usually get into the into the set list. But with any banjo tune I write, being the leader of the band, and since we do all banjo instrumentals, it got right in. So I was imagining. It. I was imagining it uh, with that kind of context, and it kind of influenced it a little bit. But on the other hand, most of the tunes the Live Five played are what I think of as bluegrass banjo yeah. tunes. We should let the folks know the instrumentation in this band that may have not heard of it. Uh, bluegrass banjo, Dixieland clarinet, uh, jazz vibes player who really has a feel for bluegrass. He used to he actually try to learn. Scruggs style. Yeah, Scrug style vibraphone. He actually did. <laughs> years before I ever met him, he had bought my book and did some learning on the banjo out of my book but he's mostly a jazz vibes player. And then a drummer, the guy used to play in Breakfast Special, if anybody remembers Breakfast Special from the 70s around here. Uh, great bluegrass drummer, Chris Dinson, and uh, Rich Moore on bass, electric bass. Well, maybe we will hear you on these coasts. Any questions for Scott and Pete, or anybody, actually, because we only have a few minutes left. I never really learned any skills per se. I, I more or less just learn melodies and how to create melodies. I know I know where each note on the banjo is. So if I need it, I know where to go get it. But um, as far as just learning and practicing scales, I've really never done that. Uh, same. That would be the same answer for me. But. Um, I, I try to learn chord positions a lot, and, and when I try to 
teach advanced banjo players, you know, and trying to make up things. I, the fact that I know this is a C7, this, that's a C7, that's a, a C9, there's a C6 over here. And to know where the 6th and the 9th and whatnot lay, I just think of them kind of as related to the chord positions and for backup and breaks, those sometimes help. It's whatever's comfortable in my opinion. I don't know, other people may differ, but my opinion is whatever's the most comfortable. Yeah, that, I think it's a real important question because I've heard of people who have really, they, when they're learning, their teacher says you've got to put two fingers down and they these tape, rubber bands, and, and they get very frustrated. They spend a lot of time just on their hand position where it should just be start with what, what seems fairly solid and comfortable. And I've even had, kind of had it out with a, a writer in, in the in Banjo newsletter years ago that uh, said, oh, you got to really work on that. And I say, no, don't spend any time on that. But there are people who think, oh, it's better to have two fingers down. The only reason I do is because it's comfortable. But same reason why I write with my right hand, and I wouldn't tell a left-handed person, well, try the right hand for three months to see if you can <laughs> switch, you know. It just, just write. That's the main thing. Go. Maybe we can pick one more. Yeah. 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 We'd like to hear Bill play something here. Bill is not only uh, the Dry Branch Fire Squad banjo player, but he he's a scholar on the banjo. He plays all kinds of advanced stuff, and he plays retro, and he plays everything. So that looks like retro right there. Yes, this is retro. But sometimes retro can turn out to be nuevo. Uh, this is a reproduction of one of the first factory-made banjos, uh, in this case a fairly faithful reproduction made by Bob Flesher, a, a great musician and maker from Peachtree City, Georgia. And this is a reproduction of a Boucher banjo. Boucher was a drum maker in Baltimore, Maryland, and banjos were so popular in the 1850s that drum makers started to retool their factories to make banjos instead. Kind of an amazing thought, but banjos uh, at this point in time were, were very, very popular. And while there was undoubtedly a lot of folk music that, go, that was there in, that, in those days, played by blacks and whites alike on the banjo, uh, there were, there's actually written music for the banjo that exists from these times in the form of, of instructional manuals for a music called minstrelsy. And minstrelsy was the first nationally popular music in our country. The uh, instruments on a minstrel stage would be a banjo, a five-string banjo, a fiddle, and percussion, a uh, tambourine, bones, and these minstrel manuals, there's about, oh, six or eight of them uh, from 18, uh, 1861, or excuse me, 1854 through the early 1860s, and they've got over 200 tunes, and some of them are sung, and some of them are plucked, and the, the, uh, are played, and the style, these minstrel manuals actually document the transition of a style that we would think of as being claw hammer style, although they called it stroke style, to a picking style, which was uh, came to be called the classic or parlor style. This shift occurred for a lot of banjo players in the years immediately following the Civil War, and these ma these manuals uh, discuss these differences and have pieces in these various styles. But since we had Leroy here, I wanted to hear, uh, wanted to bring this banjo and play some pieces that would be pre-claw hammer in many ways. And uh, I'll play one that we all probably know. You know Devil's Dream, right? The, and of course, Bill Keith worked out a great melodic version of that for the banjo. Well, here's a version from 1854 of Devil's Dream.
of this style going on right now and there's a great Virginian named Joe Ayers who has a bunch of tapes available in this style and, and, and these manuals are being reprinted folks are making minstrel banjos there's two or three of them around it's a very hypnotic kind of form of banjo playing to get into it's not very difficult either so uh, um, and we'll be I'll be around actually for a workshop on Sunday and I'll bring all these banjos and if, if somebody wants to hear more of these various styles we can get into that speaking of which there have for all you banjo players who want to hit every banjo workshop this weekend there has been an adjustment in the schedule because of Bill Keith's um, schedule this weekend his workshop will be tomorrow and uh, the time on that will be at noon and I'll be there with Bill Keith. And then on Sunday, Ira Gitlin and I will do a master session at 11 a.m. So we're just switching, uh, just switching the days. Well, let's play one more to yeah. kind of take her home. Yeah. Leroy, you name the tune, man. Name that tune. Play goodbye, Liza Jane. All right. All right. Can you play that? Yeah. Jane, good job. Yeah, you played in Jane. I'll try. And uh, for those of you who brought your banjos, uh, 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 the next next time slot here at this place here is practice for the All Festival Bluegrass Band, and we're gonna work on solos. You know, good solo we can all play for that simultaneously, and uh, get your friends out, uh, get them over here so we can practice up. You know, make make up some some good breaks for the, what we're all gonna play together on Sunday. Okay, take her off there, Leroy. <laughs> you, you, you know some words in this one too. I ain't gonna slang it. Alright. He's saving himself. He's saving himself. <laughs> Let's see what we got
Leroy, Leroy Troy, Peter Winnick. Thanks very much. And Bill Evans.